Hello and welcome to this rapid review of the cerebral ventricles. They are tricky things to understand, but essentially they are a series of interconnected fluid-filled spaces that lie inside the brain, completely hidden from view. The fluid inside is known as cerebral spinal fluid, and that circulates around the ventricles and around the subarachnoid space. The CSF is produced by specialized cells that line the floor of the ventricles. The presence of these spaces are due to the fact that they are derivatives of the open space within the embryonic neural tube. The largest of these spaces is known as the lateral ventricles, and there's one of those in each hemisphere. At the front, we have a projection, and that projection is known as the anterior horn, and that projects into the frontal lobe. Inferiorly, projecting into the temporal lobe, we have another extension, and this is known as the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. And this connection forms a C-shape. Posteriorly, we have an extension into the occipital lobe, and this is known as the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. In the middle, we have a structure known as the third ventricle, and this is often confusing because there is not a named first and second ventricle, and that's because there are two lateral ventricles in each hemisphere, so they are equivalent to the first and the second ventricles. Then we have the third ventricle, which is lying in between the left and the right thalamus. The third ventricle joins the fourth ventricle by the cerebral aqueduct in the midbrain, which is a small hollow tube connecting the two. And the fourth ventricle, which is characteristically diamond shaped, eventually narrows to form the central canal of the spinal cord. So Joining the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle is a structure known as the interventricular foramen. This is sometimes known as the foramen of Monroe. So that pretty much completes our simple picture of the ventricular structures. Now we can have a look at them in an isolated view, one at the top viewed from the left, viewed laterally, and one as viewed from above. So here we can see the anterior horn of the left and the right lateral ventricles. We can see the posterior horn of the ventricles as well. Also we can see the individual inferior horns here, the left and the right inferior horns of the lateral ventricle and we can see the connection with that C-shape. We can see the third ventricle and we can see the fourth ventricle as well. Also we can draw on the intraventricular foramen, the foramen of Munro, which is where CSF travels from the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle and the space in the middle of the third ventricle is the connection of the left and the right thalamus. This is known as the interthalamic adhesion. So what we want to do now is focus a little bit on the apertures that allow CSF to travel out of the ventricles and into the subarachnoid space and we can do this by looking at the diagram which is at the bottom of this uh, image. We can label on the major structures again, which we've seen already, but what we wanna do is focus on the lateral aperture, which we can see here, and in red, the, the, the lateral aperture, which is the foramen of Lushka, and also the median aperture, which is the foramen of Magendi. So there's two foramen Lushkas, and these allow CSF to flow into the subarachnoid space where it is eventually absorbed by arachnoid granulations. Likewise, the foramen of Magendi allows for the CSF to drain in the cisterna magna. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.